Okay, good morning, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar entitled Accelerate Your Research with Synthetic DNA and Hands-Free Cloning. My name is Karen Clayman, a product manager here at Lucigen, and I will be moderating the event today. A few items before we begin. Please use the chat window at the lower left corner of the screen for entering any questions you may have during the presentation. All the questions will then be addressed at the end of the presentation. Live polls will be introduced periodically throughout the presentation, so please feel free to participate. Your responses are anonymous, but remember to exit full screen mode to see the polls by selecting the escape button. And with that, I'm very pleased to introduce today's speaker, Beth Fry, a product manager here at Lucigen. Beth manages our cloning product line, which includes Lucigen's popular, highly competent cells. Beth? All right. Well, thank you very much for the introduction, and I'd like to thank the audience for being with us today. Um, today we are featuring content that is developed in collaboration with SGI DNA, and together we're going to talk about the power of synthetic biology tools and how you can leverage them to move your research forward faster. And that power of synthetic biology is really that it allows assembly of almost any desired DNA sequence. And many of the modern genomics applications that you all are probably working with may start with something like gene synthesis, including protein production, antibody library generation, or even cell engineering. So when we talk about synthetic biology, what is synthetic biology? It really refers to the redesign, repurposing, and generation of naturally occurring biological systems and components as well as the design and creation of new biological components and systems that don't already exist in nature. And synthetic biology is used in many different industries, including some of those you see here. So agriculture, food and nutrition, energy, chemicals, environmental, and even medicinal applications. So first, let's talk a little bit about our collaborator, SGI DNA. And this is the company that brings synthetic genomic solutions to advance your research. SGI DNA was founded as a wholly owned subsidiary of Synthetic Genomics in 2013 in La Jolla, California. And the company uses new and proprietary DNA technologies to produce complex synthetic genes and reagents and makes those available to researchers like you. So they're focused on advancing research by building scientific advancements and breakthroughs from leading scientists in the field of synthetic biology. Um, just as an example, like Dan Gibson, who was one of the founders of SGI DNA and the inventor of Gibson Assembly Technology, which we'll talk about today. And he's also currently the Chief Technology Officer at SGI DNA. So what exactly does SGI DNA offer to researchers? Well, all of the reagents and instruments and bioinformatic tools that SGI offers are intended to expand the use and applications of synthetic biology. So at SGI DNA, you can find instrumentation, including the BioXP, which we'll talk about today, and its multiple genomic applications, and then reagents, such as Gibson assembly enzyme and mixes and vectors and kits. And today, we'll cover cloning applications in synthetic biology with a focus on the BioXP system and the Gibson assembly method. So to start our discussion off, let's review some common, geno common genomic applications and their impact in various scientific fields. Let's start with cloning. So cloning is really an enabling technology that has been utilized for decades in scientific research. And it's led scientists to discover the entire genetic sequence of many different species. It's allowed scientists to inactivate genes in humans and in or other organisms, and also to create transgenic organisms like herbicide-resistant plants and even glow-in-the-dark mice that are shown here. And clone genes are also used to produce recombinant pharmaceutical drugs, such as insulin or clotting factors or human growth hormone, as well as industrial enzymes. And another genomics application is genome modification and genome editing. And this represents, as you all know, a very active field of research because of the wide range of possible applications in uh, areas like human health and agricultural biology. So for example, we now have the ability to correct a gene carrying a harmful mutation or produce therapeutic proteins or eliminate persistent viral sequences. And we have the ability to develop new generations of genetically modified plants. And of course, these applications also require development of new research tools. 
And the major advantage of utilizing synthetic biology in genome engineering is it enables a specific area of the DNA to be modified. So it increases the precision of the correction or insertion that you wish to make. And using synthetic reagents also helps to prevent cell toxicity, and it also offers the perfect reproducibility between experiments. So another genomics application is variant library construction, and this is a very powerful way to quickly identify unique gene variants of interest. So generating variant libraries in the traditional method requires a series of common steps, but it can take weeks to perform, and it often requires some highly skilled hands at the bench. But utilizing synthetic biology to generate variant libraries provides a powerful approach in an automated and hands-free format, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. So you simply design the locations of the variant sites, and then you clone and transform and then screen. So you create your library very quickly. And having that ability to create variant libraries in a matter of days allows you to quickly identify variants of interest for further study downstream. And this will actually bring us to our first audience poll, where we'd like to understand how you obtain the DNA sequences you need for your experiments. OK, so how do you prepare and modify your genes for analysis? Do you PCR amplify, perform site-directed immunogenesis, Perhaps you uh, order synthetic DNA from a service provider, or finally construct your own libraries from cDNA. Please select all that apply. And uh, site-directed immunogenesis is um, a popular selection along with PCR amplification. Great. Thank you, everyone. OK. Thank you, audience, for participating in our poll. We very much appreciate it. Um, and now let's look at the automated platform that allows you to produce your DNA sequences. And we're going to start off by talking about the Gibson assembly method. Dr. Gam Dan Gibson, who is now Chief Technology Officer at SGI DNA, developed this Gibson assembly method cloning methodology. And this allowed him to assemble the largest synthetic construct to date, which is shown here. And this is a 1.2 megabase mycoplasma genome. And this synthetic genome was assembled from a total of over 1,000 overlapping DNA cassettes, and it took three steps to do it. So in the first step, 1,080 base pair cassettes, um, sorry, 1,000, the cassettes were 1,080 base pairs long. They were produced from overlapping synthetic oligos, and they were combined in sets of 10 to produce 109 10 kb assemblies. And those are shown here by the blue arrows. Those 10 kb assemblies are, are all in the blue arrows in the very center of the, the rings here. And then uh, those were recombined in sets of 10 to produce 11 different 100 kb assemblies, and those are shown by the green arrows. And then finally, those 11 fragments were recombined into the complete genome, shown by the red circle. And Dr. Gibson then used this synthetic construct in a recipient cell to develop the first synthetic cell, which is very exciting. And so since its invention, the Gibson assembly method has become a mainstay in many synthetic biology labs because it's easy, it's very robust, and it's very flexible. And SGNI DNA has harnessed the power of Gibson assembly and then applied it to automation on the BioXP. And to understand why the Gibson assembly method is really so powerful, let's look at how it compares to traditional cloning methods. So traditional cloning often begins with digestion of DNA and then a series of manual steps to build the clones of interest. So if you're interested in building very large inserts, it often requires sequential steps taking many weeks. So assembling a large or multi-fragment assemblies with traditional cloning usually starts with restriction enzyme digestions and then ligating those fragments together and then transforming and picking colonies and screening and then redigesting that same clone in order to add the next fragment and then the next fragment and then the next fragment until you have a clone that's functional for your studies. And this can take a really long time and it can actually result in many failed attempts because those multiple steps of restriction enzyme clonings are really not very efficient. So in contrast, on the right-hand side, the Gibson assembly method allows you to design multiple fragments that can be assembled in a single reaction. So you have a seamless clone. So Gibson assembly starts with digesting the desired fragments with PCR, or sorry, generating the de desired fragments with PCR. So on the top there with those multicolored fragments. So the amplicons have small 20 to 40 base pair overlaps with the adjacent fragments. And then those fragments are combined 
in a Gibson assembly cloning reaction with the linearized plasmid backbone and the Gibson assembly mix from SGI DNA. And during that reaction, which takes about an hour or so, the fragments are assembled in order into the plasmid backbone. And then you just pick colonies and screen them for your desired clone. So this is a one-step cloning reaction, and it really significantly reduces hands-on time and elapsed time. And it requires many fewer steps and fewer reagents than traditional cloning. And this is also scarless cloning, so there are no restriction site scars that remain in the final product. And this has really had a significant impact on advancing synthetic biology because Gibson assembly makes creating very large or complex clones so much easier. So now that we've looked at Gibson assembly, uh, let's look at the BioXP 3200 system and how it can be used to automate Gibson assembly. So the BioXP is a benchtop instrument and it's really the world's first personal genomic workstation. And it enables applications like building those synthetic DNA constructs or DNA libraries, all in a very small two by two foot space right on your bench top. And the system was launched in early 2015 with a single product type. And since then, SGI DNA has evolved a series of applications that are targeted to simplify genomic workflows. And they continue to develop new time-saving applications all the time. So the BioXP mission really is to automate genomic applications. And it offers hands-free assembly and cloning of 350 base pair to 1.8 KB DNA fragments. It allows you to perform 32 independent reactions in a single run. It provides workflow control, so you obtain both the DNA fragments and the clones. And it streamlines genomic processing of those tedious applications like cleanup and enzymatic digestion steps and enzymatic uh, cloning steps. And it really saves weeks of time over those conventional cloning processes that we just talked about. And as a bonus, it's really simple to use. So uh, loading the deck and starting the run takes about 10 minutes and it works overnight while you sleep. So the idea is that by understanding how the BioXP works and how it can be used, you can accelerate your speed of discovery. So the applications that are currently available on the BioXP include BioXP tiles, and these are simply linear double-stranded DNA fragments that you can build on the BioXP. And the end product, or tile, is built to the sequence that you submit. So the assembly process results in a pool of DNA that is purified and then ready for your downstream applications. And once the order is placed, you'll receive your custom kit containing the oligos you need in approximately three to five business days. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the other things that your custom kit includes. BioXP cloning is the automated cloning feature for your synthetic DNA. So the system first builds the DNA fragment you've submitted and then clones it into a prepared vector. And then BioXP degenerate libraries are just a collection of tiles whose sequence includes degenerate bases resulting in a library of sequences for you to screen. So we'll talk a little bit more about each of these applications. But now that you have an overview of the system, we'll review how you can engage with the system and how what the workflow looks like. So let's review that workflow. Um, so building genes on the BioXP system begins with ordering your custom BioXP kit. And so once you've identified the sequence or the product that you want to build, you simply upload those sequences to SGI DNA's secure website. And then SGI DNA will review the sequence and design and build the oligos you need to create your sequence. And then they put them, uh, the oligos, into a custom kit, including all the reagents that you're going to need for assembly on the BioXP. And the custom kit is shipped to you in about three to five days in the U.S. And then once you receive your custom reagents, all you do is thaw them and load them onto the deck and close the lid. And then the BioXP will actually connect with the cloud to pull your optimized cloning protocol. And then the instrument will prompt you to begin the run. So the BioXP tiles and clones generally run overnight, uh, about 12 to 19 hours, depending on construct complexity. So you can load the instrument and start the job in about 10 minutes. And then the next morning, your DNA fragments or cloning reaction are ready for your downstream workflow. And the goal of this, the BioXP, again, really is to put synthetic biology into the hands of everyone. 
and they want to eliminate that uh, hands-on labor and overhead in the cloning process so that you can focus on other things. And it allows you to significantly decrease gene synthesis costs and turnaround time as well so you can get on with your research. So what does this instrument look like? Um, well, the BioXP was designed and built with flexibility in mind. So let's go over a few key components. This is a picture of the instrument deck with the instrument lid open. And first, located in the back center of the instrument, there's a thermal cycler with a pivoting heated lid. And that allows very reliable, very repeatable reaction conditions. And this is where all of the enzymatic reactions take place. And then there are two chilled areas which keep the reagents cool, and that maintains their integrity during long cycling times. It's kind of like having an ice bucket in your system. And it also has a spot to load eight well strips, and this is really the key to the versatility of the system because it enables you to introduce new reagents or your own reagents to the system like customized vectors. And DNA purification takes place on a 96 well magnetic stand, and this is used for final DNA cleanup after assembly. And of course, it also includes a specially designed ethanol reservoir for fresh 70% ethanol. And of course, it includes places to hold tips and the waste bucket as well. So as I mentioned, the system is really meant to be versatile. This same deck is capable of any enzymatic application, so you don't need to buy a new instrument just to perform a new application. And all applications that are in development today at SGI DNA utilize this same hardware. So along with your BioXP custom kit, um, you will receive a, bio, uh, a product map. And this includes the project details like the date, the unique job code, the product type, and where the sequence will be located after the run. And you'll notice that there are red and green dots on the map, and this is because each sequence is reviewed to determine whether its sequence dynamics fall into the sweet pot spot of the BioXP. So green means there's a high likelihood of success. Red means it's more challenging to build on the system. But you are able to try any sequence that you like. And then the back side of the product map includes specific reagents that were shipped as part of this kit. And you'll note that some of the modules are stored at different temperatures, so it's important to have proper storage uh, conditions for all of those uh, reagents, and then grab them all and uh, everything that you need from the kit in order to set up your run. And it really is very simple to use in your own lab. So now that we've gone over the workflow tools, uh, let's take a look at BioXP tiles. And remember, the BioXP tiles are the high-quality double-stranded DNA fragments that can be built on the BioXP and then be cloned or assembled into vectors or larger DNA fragments. So the BioXP has the, the ability to successfully assemble DNA tiles in a range of DNA complexities. And the size range of the tiles is from 400 base pairs to 1800 base pairs with an average GC of 20 to 70 percent for constructs between 350 to 1 kb or 40 to 60 percent for constructs between 1 .8, um, one, up to 1.8 kb. Low sequence complexity like uh, tandem repeats or homology strings, um, SGI DNA's analysis will determine the best approach for assembly of those kinds of, of, um, of uh, complexity projects. And then error correction is also part of the process. Um, to minimize the occurrence of mutations. And uh, the resulting product yield, you'll get a po about 200 nanograms of purified linear double-stranded DNA product in about 45 microliters of TE buffer. But um, actual yield can vary per construct, of course. And then the cloning products uh, ha result in a completed cloning reaction, ready to transform, or move on with whatever the next step is in your workflow. And this gel represents the dynamic range of the DNA fragments that are built on the BioXP. And these are four sets of DNA tiles. The sizes of each of the fragments are listed in the table on the right. And each set of fragments was built to the same length, lengths, but having different GC contents. So ranging from 40 and 45% on top of the gel to 55 and 60% GC on the bottom. And then the size of the DNA fragments range from about 400 base pairs up to about 1.8 kb. So as you can see, there's a fairly wide range of sequence length and GC compatibility for DNA assembly on the BioXP. And you can see successful assembly also is dependent on DNA dynamics because some of these fragments build more robustly than others. You get a stronger band in some of these uh, lanes. 
And in general, the sequences that are within the BioXP compatibility guidelines are projected to build successfully on the instrument. So now that we know how to build DNA tiles, let's talk a little bit about libraries. And the libraries that are built on the BioXP are libraries of DNA tiles. The BioXP has the ability to successfully assemble common DNA libraries in a very cost-effective and efficient way. So you can generate key libraries and understand gene function. And here are examples of different kinds of libraries that can be built on the system. Degenerate libraries allow the BioXP sequences to be submitted with any IUPAC-based sequence. So this allows for a very simple way to build a very diverse library to investigate gene function. And then variant libraries are just a collection of sequences that share high homology since they're simply variants of the other. Because uh, the variants are highly homologous, um, this kind of library is very quick and relatively inexpensive to build, and it allows you to investigate a large number of intelligently designed sequences. And then we have scanning libraries, which can be designed with or without degenerate bases. And this figure represents a common scanning library where each individual amino acid is altered to NNN, or to degenerate bases. And this really allows you to better understand the importance of each specific amino acid in a behavior or function of the gene. And again, the ability to build these libraries on an automated system saves a significant amount of time in your lab. So now that we've talked about the kinds of linear DNA tiles you can build on the BioXP, let's talk about cloning, everybody's favorite subject. Um, and this instrument really is very powerful and has the ability to help with the cloning workflow in your lab. So the BioXP is the first and only automated cloning system that allows you to build synthetic genes and clone them directly into your vector, your vector of choice, hands-free in your lab using Gibson assembly. So this really allows you to forget about subcloning, which can save weeks of time. You can also decrease, uh, increase your cloning throughput. So you can form up to 32 custom cloning reactions into one to four different vectors in a single overnight run. And at the end of the run, you get both the tile and the cloned product. So it yields both, both products for you. And it really allows very simple single button processing. And then the BioXP supports DNA samples in a very broad range of sequence lengths and GC content, like we just discussed. And then uh, support protocols and QC methods for vector preparation are available for you if you want to look them up on the BioXP custom cloning web page. So the support is there as well. And Gibson assembly on the BioXP is really pretty straightforward. So your cloning reactions are designed with homologous, over, homologous overlaps to your vector. And so your DNA fragments, uh, that'll allow them to anneal and ligate, and then you simply need to design your fragments and vector accordingly with those overlaps, and the system does the rest for you. SGI DNA has prepared cloning vectors for Gibson assembly in their catalog. Um, so if you want to use something that they already have in their catalog, you can use that, or you can use your own custom vector that you've built uh, for your own lab. So let's take a closer look at how this process works. Um, in order to build the DNA fragments you need and clone them directly into the vector of your choice using Gibson assembly, you start with the design of the final clone product. So you need to decide what you want to build. Then you prepare the cloning vector of your choice, and that means linearizing the vector, running a QC test, and uh, quantitating your linearized vector. And then you order the custom uh, cloning BioXP product online. And once the custom kit is received in your lab, the workflow looks very similar to the DNA tiles workflow. You load the kit components and ethanol and your prepared vector onto the BioXP deck. Um, the, the instrument will pull the protocol from the cloud and prompt you to begin the run. And your cloning reaction will be complete and ready for transformation the next morning. And then you simply transform and pick colonies and analyze them to find your error-free clone. So just think, you know, what you could do in your lab if you could make 32 unique clones in a single vector or in four different vectors even in a single overnight run. Can you imagine going from designing your clones to having 32 error-free multi-fragment clones in six to eight days? So this really begs the question, right, how well does it work? So in order to demonstrate the cloning efficiency of the system, SGI DNA built DNA fragments on the BioXP and then cloned them into their own PUCGA vector. This is a vector they have available in their catalog. 
uh, using the BioXP cloning module. So the cloning efficiency was calculated by using both blue-white screening of the colonies and also by analyzing each clone for full length inserts. So the efficiency is expressed here as a percentage and it's the percentage of white colonies with full length inserts compared to the total colony yield. So overall the cloning efficiency is about 83% and as expected the smaller fragments cloned at a higher rate with an overall average of over 90% efficiency. So let's compare the timelines here for building a variant library. BioXP cloning on top here shows about six to eight days to obtain error-free clones. And this is built in your own custom vector with minimal hands-on time. Now if you order synthetic genes from a gene synthesis company, these are normally delivered in a standard vector, not your own custom vector. So you'll need to subclone the genes into your own vector after your clones are synthesized. And this whole process can take a minimum of 15 to 20 days of your time. Of course, you can also choose to deliver your own custom vector to the gene synthesis company and have them clone your gene directly into it if they offer that service. But then working with a non-standard vector can take your gene synthesis company even longer to complete the project. And in some cases, it's slower than just doing the subcloning yourself, at least in my experience it has been. So you might be looking at a month of time just spent waiting for your clones to arrive. And then traditional cloning can also take almost a month as well between the PCR and the purification steps necessary that are just necessary to generate the DNA fragments you even want to assemble, and then cloning and transformation, and then generating all the variants and confirming them. So the BioXP can really accelerate your timeline. Um, and I think this will bring us to our next audience poll, um, where we'd like to hear from you about your cloning methods that you're using in your lab. Okay, so what cloning methods do you and your lab mates commonly use? The traditional restriction enzyme cloning perhaps, or the gateway or TA cloning, Golden Gate method, ligation independent cloning, or the Gibson assembly cloning. Please again select all that apply. And uh, we'll see here, Gibson, we do have a lot of Gibson assembly users out there currently along with the traditional restriction enzyme cloning, but uh, we do have interest in all of them. Very interesting. Okay, Beth, I think you'll find um, that there are some Gibson assembly cloning participants out in the audience today. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, close the poll and continue the presentation. All right. Well, thank you again for participating in our second poll. We appreciate it. Um, and now we'll move from cloning to transformation. Um, as you all know, a common step in the cloning workflow after gene assembly or after ligation is transformation into competent E. coli. So we're going to take a minute to give you some tips on how to maximize your transformation success. So there are many different options in the marketplace for competent E. coli, and they range from subcloning efficiency to ultra-high efficiency. And high efficiency cells maximize your success in avoiding experimental retweets and provide increased colony counts for Gibson, for, uh, Gibson cloning. So while many different competent cells will work for ideal conditions, SGI DNA has actually found a couple of the leucogen comp cells that outperform most others when using the Gibson assembly reaction. So leucogen's E. cloni and Transformax Epi300 are the two strains that are strongly recommended for Gibson assembly cloning. Uh, these cells have proven to be very robust when transforming Gibson assembly reactions. And they are ideal for basically any workflow, but they've really made the difference for many customers who've experienced low colony counts after Gibson assembly transformation. And they've reduced that time spent troubleshooting. So if you can't decide which competent cells suit your needs, uh, we'll review a couple of highlights here that may help. First, the transformation method is one of those key differences between these cell lines. Um, for chemical transformation, uh, SGI recommends the E. cloni chemically competent cells. These can be used with the familiar heat shock transformation method. These cells are also available as an electrocompetent version, although SGI DNA has not tested them with Gibson assembly to date. And chemically competent cells can handle larger volumes of DNA during transformation. They don't really require any specialized equipment in order to use them, and they're generally considered easier to work with and easy to automate in high-throughput processes. 
So electric competent cells have a shorter protocol and a higher transformation efficiency than chemically competent cells, but they do require an electroporator and cuvettes in order to accomplish a transformation. But with the right electroporation equipment, these cells really are very amenable to automated workflows, and there are some customers that have done that as well. Another consideration is that the electrocompetent Epi-300 cells can accept up to 145 kb plasmids. So if you're working with something very large, that also might be a consideration for you. And both of these strains are compatible with many needs of today's researchers. So they have optimized genotypes for plasmid preps, including RecA and NDA minus. So they yield very high quality DNA while minimizing unwanted recombination. And there are a few key differences that may impact your choice of cell line. For, for example, if phage contamination is a concern in your process or in your lab, you may want to choose the Eclonai 10G chemicomps. Those are resistant to T1 phage uh, contamination. And then if you're working with plasmids that contain an or V origin of replication, and these tend to be very large back or phosmid vectors, you can control the copy number of that vector by using Transformax Epi 300 electrocomps. If you have any questions, though, about which cell line to choose, if you have any questions, though, about which cell line to choose, please go ahead and contact the Lucigen technical support team. They'll be able to provide additional guidance for you for your specific situation and your specific project. And also note that both of these strains are available in a variety of formats, including custom packaging based on your needs. So if your lab needs the cells delivered in larger or smaller aliquot sizes, or if you need to use your cells in specific plates that fit uh, a particular laboratory instrumentation, just let us know. Our custom comp cell preparation services team works with customers all the time to provide any of our comp cell strains in plates or tubes that you need for your workflow. So just visit the custom comp cell page on the Lucigen website uh, for more information. And since SGI DNA recommends both of these lines, let's look at how they compare when transformed with Gibson assembly reaction. So first, let's look at plates. And these are uh, auger plates that are the result of um, transformation, transforming a Gibson assembly reaction into both the uh, Transformax Epi 300, which is shown on top here, that's the electrocompetent cell line, and 10G, that's the chemically competent cell line on the bottom. And while chemically competent cells generally have lower transformation efficiency, I mean, visually you can see there are more cells or more colonies with the 10G plates than with the Epi 300 plates. So in fact, the summary table shows a two to six fold greater cloning, um, two to six fold higher colony count with chemically competent cells in this case versus the electrocomp Epi 300. And this is really pretty great news since the chemically competent cells are more economical and they don't require um, additional equipment. And this is just a note for those of you performing any bacterial transformations. Um, it applies to Gibson assembly as well as other cloning workflows. So Lucigen has found that all LB agar medium is not created equal. Um, there are two types of LB that are commonly used in laboratories, and they only differ in the amount of sodium chloride in the formulation. So LB Lennox on the left-hand side, which is considered low salt LB, and LB Miller, which is considered high salt LB. And when plating cells after transformation, we at Lucigen have seen optimal colony growth on LB Lennox, while the colonies grown on LB Miller tend to be smaller and sometimes of heterologous colony size. So for most Lucigen cloning and expression stains, we highly recommend these low salt LB Lennox for plating all your transformations. And if you are interested in testing Lucigen competent cells with your Gibson assembly reactions, you can get a free sample through our sample program, which is found at lucigen.com slash sample cells. And the image on the right is directly from the Lucigen sampling request page. You simply pick the strain you want to test from the drop-down menu and then insert your shipping information. And you'll get your sample very quickly. Uh, Lucigen cells can be drop shipped with overnight shipping in the US and Canada. And for international shipments, we can ship direct or we can work through our global distributor network. Um, we have a whole host of different distributors that we work for and work with in different geographical locations. So not a problem. Lucigen actually has multiple comp cell samples um, that are optimized for different applications. So I uh, just wanted to throw this in here. 
um, in addition to the strains that are endorsed by SGI DNA for Gibson assembly cloning, we have sampling available for the 10G electrocompetent cells and for our Endura cells, which are recommended in Broad Institute protocols for generating and propagating CRISPR lentiviral guide RNA libraries, as well as four different cell lines that can be used for generating phage display libraries. So you'll note that the high efficiency of leucogen competent cells are often cited in protocols for both routine cloning as well as for difficult cloning or library generation. So in other words, in those places where you really need high efficiency transformation, really high efficiency cells in order to, to get enough colonies to move on to the next step. So whether you're using Gibson assembly cloning or not, it's worth getting a free sample of these cells to try. And then just a note regarding resources, there are a number of uh, relevant application notes outlining all the topics we've discussed so far, um, and these are listed on the resources page at sgidna.com uh, if you'd like more information. So to summarize what we've talked about today, uh, we've talked about the BioXP system and its unique capability to print DNA on your bench as well as perform a number of genomic applications in a very easy and automated format. And the BioXP has a number of applications currently available, some of which we covered today. And SGI DNA is really dedicated to building those new applications. So it currently offers a range. Um, they really want to put synthetic biology, uh, synthetic biology in the hands of all researchers and help you accelerate your genomic discovery. And their ongoing development of those new applications are really driven by listening to you, their customers. So given what you've learned today, uh, that'll bring us to our next poll question about what applications can you imagine automating on your benchtop with the BioXP. Okay, and the options are automated custom cloning with prepared DNA fragments and vectors, large DNA constructs, degenerate libraries, multi-fragment assemblies, transformation, and then we have in vitro transcription and in vitro translation. Again, please select all that may apply. And we are looking at multi-fragment assemblies as being very popular. Um, also with automated custom cloning coming up as a, a close second here. And if you have any other um, Options, please go ahead and put those in the chat box. Very good. Okay, we'll go ahead and close the poll, and we appreciate your participation. All right. Well, thank you very much for participating in our third and last poll. Um, very interesting results. Thank you, everyone, for, com for your, your comments and answers. And um, we really want to thank you for attending the webinar today. We know that your time is very valuable, um, and we hope that you learned something that will help your research move forward. And for more information, you can always visit sgidna.com or lucigen.com, or just give us a call. We are more than happy to help you learn more. And I think that'll close out the webinar uh, portion of the, of the uh, presentation here, and I will hand it back to Karen. Okay, great. Thank you, Beth. Um, we'll now go ahead and entertain your questions. So go ahead and please type in the chat box any questions you may have. And uh, while we're doing so, Beth, uh, Mahmoud had a couple of questions. He's really interested in the price for the BioXP and the reagents. And then secondarily, he is interested in a protocol for the Epi 300 automated pipeline. And if there's not a protocol per se, is there something, um, any hint to design for that type of an experiment? Sure. Okay. So we'll we'll take the first question first about the cost of the BioXP and and the cost of the reagents. It looks like that's a question that some other folks have as well. Um, unfortunately, we do not have a representative from SGI DNA on the webinar with us today. But what we're going to do is um, collect your questions about uh, cost and, and purchase price, and we'll get you connected with the uh, with technical service through their customer service um, email here. So um, we're going to collect those questions and make sure that you guys get answers individually to your questions from the tech support team at SGI DNA about, um, about a reagent cost and instrument cost. Um, as far as an automated protocol for the EPI 300, um, so the EPI 300s are a protocol for transforming Gibson reactions into the EPI 300 cells 
are in the Gibson assembly mix um, and in supplementary protocols on the SGI DNA website. And as far as um, getting them in an automated pipeline, um, again, you know, if, if you have an automated system that you're using for transforming reactions and um, you need the cells to be in, to fit in that automation, um, Lucigen can work with you to give it those cells to you in any format you need. So um, as a catalog item, the FE300s come in tubes um, of a couple, I think it's a couple transformation per tube, um, but we can deliver those to you in plates if you like, um, and often actually at a, a discount if you're buying them in bulk. So um, that's something we can work with you um, if that's of interest to you, um, if I've understood your question uh, correctly. Um, but we do that with customers all the time, so not a problem. All right. Um, Amit has a question about the, is the BioXP system a new addition to Lucigen? Sure. So today, Amit, our content was um, was developed in collaboration with SGI DNA, and the instrument, the BioXP instrument, actually is an instrument that is made and sold by SGI DNA, our collaborator today. So um, the any purchase of the instrument will be made through SGI DNA, as well as purchasing any of the Gibson assembly mixes, or the libraries, or the custom cloning kits that we talked about today. We can, again, we can get you connected with their technical support so you can uh, uh, ask more questions about what your individual project may entail. Sure. All right. Very good. Any more questions? This is the last opportunity. And um, if we don't have any further questions, I'd uh, again like to thank Beth and you, the audience, for participating today. Um, if you do have additional questions that come up, um, please go ahead and email our technical support team at the email address on your screen. So um, thank you, everyone, and uh, please go ahead and enjoy your day. Thanks, everyone.